What's going on guys? The Comics Kid 2099 here. Welcome to day 297 of the 365 day graphic novel review challenge. Uh, I am filming uh, these videos out of order. Uh, I am still a little bit sick uh, as you uh, saw a couple of videos ago when I was talking about Seven Soldiers of Victory Volume 1. Uh, so anyway, bear with me as I sound like I have uh, 100,000 pounds of sickness in my head. Uh, so anyway, today I'm going to be talking about Multiversity. Uh, this is a big uh, seven or eight issue miniseries by Grant Morrison and uh, several different artists. Uh, this was requested by uh, Connor Nielsen. Uh, I was planning on doing this anyway, uh, but I wanted to take my time with it. I wanted to really uh, soak it in and enjoy it. So I read like one issue a day for like a week. Uh, this is uh, maybe one of the most uh, ambitious things that Grant Morrison has ever attempted. And I know I said that about Seven Soldiers of Victory also, uh, but I feel like Seven Soldiers of Victory was ambitious and it succeeded. Uh, now, it might not have been very popular. A lot of the characters that Grant Morrison either uh, revitalized or introduced might not have really stuck around. A lot of other people didn't really care for what he did. Uh, for example, uh, you didn't really see Shiloh Norman uh, show up a whole lot after the Seven Soldiers of Victory uh, that uh, Grant Morrison did. Uh, but I feel like you read that story and it reads very well. Uh, it's aged very well. Uh, I don't find a whole lot of flaws with the overall uh, experiment that Seven Soldiers was. Uh, meanwhile, with Multiversity, uh, I feel like this is also an experiment, and it doesn't work as well for me. Uh, this is probably uh, more well-liked than Seven Soldiers was, uh, but for me, it didn't work as well. Uh, the basic premise of this is that uh, the multiverse is being attacked by this gigantic uh, demon thing called the Gentry, uh, and it basically is a giant egg with bat wings, uh, and they even make fun of that at one point. Uh, there's this like uh, comic book reader, uh, you're hearing their narrations, and they're making fun of how the Gentry is basically just uh, a big egg with wings. Uh, so anyway, Anyway, it is kind of silly, uh, and I imagine that Morrison was thinking like, okay, no matter what we draw, it's not going to look as terrifying as what we want it to be, so let's just make it look really goofy. I'm imagining that's what he instructed uh, the artists who are working on this. But anyway, uh, this big creature is uh, trying to destroy the multiverse, and uh, so you've got uh, Nix Watson. Uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, he is the last watcher. He was introduced in Final Crisis. Uh, Final Crisis, by the way, if you remember, I reviewed it a couple years ago. Uh, that story didn't really work for me, uh, but but uh, Nick Swatson, he is the last of the Watchers, and uh, he is corrupted by the Gentry, and uh, this, in the same way that Seven Soldiers did, uh, there is uh, two bookend issues. Uh, we start off with uh, several different characters from different realities working together uh, to try and uh, defeat the Gentry, and then Nick Swatson, he is corrupted, and then we jump into all of these uh, standalone issues uh, that each take place on a different Earth. Uh, so we get one issue that takes place on Thunderworld, uh, which is an old-school Captain Marvel type story. Uh, we get one issue issue that takes place on uh, a world that uh, it's kind of set in the future, uh, the second generation DC superheroes where uh, all crime has been uh, eradicated, and so characters like Damian Wayne, he's the new Batman, uh, Chris Kent, he is the new Superman, uh, Alexander, or uh, Alexis Luthor, uh, she is Lex Luthor's daughter, and she's dating Batman. Uh, basically, all these characters, uh, they are like the Kim Kardashians and the Paris Hiltons of the superhero universe. Uh, they're all bored, and they're all just spoiled brats, and they don't really have anything to do. Uh, so that one was called The Just, I think. And then we have, uh, I'm trying to remember all of them. I know I'm not reading them, uh, I'm not remembering them in order. Uh, but then we have, uh, oh, one of my favorites was the uh, kind of pulp 1940s style uh, world where uh, Dr. Fate uh, kind of looks like Doc... Uh, uh, not Doc Savage. Yeah, it is Doc Savage. Uh, he kind of looks like Doc Savage, but with a Dr. Fate helmet on. Uh, and uh, that's really cool. I really love that issue. Uh, then we have, uh, uh, there was one called Pax Americana, uh, which was kind of taking the characters who inspired Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons when they created The Watchmen, and then treating them as if uh, their story is kind of like The Watchmen. Uh, so if you didn't know, uh, originally The Watchmen was going to use uh, DC Comics characters uh, like Captain Atom, uh, Blue Beetle, uh, The Question, uh, Nightshade, uh, Peacekeeper, and then eventually somebody, uh, I don't know if it was Alan Moore or the editor who was working on The Watchmen, said, hey, uh, since you're going to be killing off some of these characters, why don't we just uh, create characters who are very similar to these characters? So uh, the uh, Blue Beetle eventually became Night Owl, uh, the Question became Rorschach, uh, Captain Adam became uh, Dr. Manhattan, etc. Uh, so the Pax Americana issue is basically taking those characters and then treating them as if they are The Watchmen. Uh, so uh, then we have the Multiversity Guidebook. Uh, I'm trying to remember all of them, and it's difficult to remember. 
we have one uh, that's set on a world where uh, Superman crash landed in Nazi Germany instead of uh, in America, and he became a Nazi super weapon. Uh, I think that's all the main ones, and then we have another bookend issue. Uh, so anyway, uh, like I said, this is an experiment, and I think a lot of people liked it at least more than Seven Soldiers, but in my opinion, uh, this, I think, fails in a way that Seven Soldiers did not, because uh, with this, uh, you can read each issue on its own, but it feels more like it's part of a grander thing, but at the same time, if you don't like that issue, then it kind of falls apart. For example, uh, I was super stoked for the Pax Americana issue. I was really, really excited to read that. I love Frank Quietly's artwork, uh, and it's still great in this. Uh, I love Grant Morrison's writing most of the time. Uh, I really like The Watchmen. I like the DC, uh, DC Comics characters who are going to be used in that story. Uh, so I thought that was going to be uh, a slam dunk, and I just did not like that issue. Uh, the whole thing is told out of order in a non-linear sequence. Uh, we start with uh, the murder of the president, and then we're kind of jumping back and forth in time. Uh, we see the question he is uh, investigating this murder, and I still don't understand what was going on with that murder that he was investigating. And then we find out why the president was killed, uh, but it doesn't really make any sense to me. Logistically, uh, I don't think that that guy, uh, based on what we know about him, would be able to even become the president of the United States. Uh, that just seemed really far-fetched to me. Uh, I feel like uh, that story would have worked better if it was told in a little bit more of a linear fashion, uh, but maybe Morrison thought uh, that he could kind of uh, mimic that one issue of The Watchmen where uh, Dr. Not Dr. Manhattan. Uh, yes, Dr. Manhattan. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm getting Dr. Manhattan and Captain Adam confused now. Uh, where Dr. Manhattan is showing the Silk Spectra uh, her mother's past and kind of uh, putting things into perspective for her, that issue where they're on Mars. I imagine that Morrison was kind of influenced by that, uh, but this felt needlessly confusing. Uh, I didn't really enjoy that one, but then I really did like uh, the issue with the pulp superheroes. Uh, Doc Fate and then uh, the Atom and uh, Anthro. Uh, I'm trying to remember some of the others. Uh, Lady Shiva, she's one of the bad guys. Uh, I can't remember. Uh, Green Lantern, uh, he's in there and he looks pretty cool. Uh, it's the Abensura Green Lantern. Uh, but uh, I like that issue quite a bit. I love the Thunderworld issue. Uh, I really wish that Grant Morrison would write like a 60 issue Captain Marvel series uh, set on its own away from the DC Universe. Uh, just its own little world uh, with the Marvel family and Dr. Savannah and Black Adam. Uh, that would just be really amazing. I never thought that uh, he would be really good at writing those characters. Uh, he did use Captain Marvel in one of his storylines in Justice League, uh, but he felt really corny and hokey there. And he's supposed to be a little bit corny and hokey, uh, but it felt like he was almost making fun of the character in Justice League. But here, it feels very sincere and very genuine. And I really love the Thunderworld issue. That was maybe one of my favorites. It's a tie between uh, the uh, 1940s pulp issue, uh, which uh, it's called like uh, SOS or Secret uh, Society of uh, Superheroes or something like that. Uh, but I really like that issue and the Thunderworld issue, uh, the Nazi issue, it was okay, but it felt like the story didn't really get started until the end of the issue. Uh, it was like a 40-page issue. In fact, most of these are about 40-page issues, uh, but uh, the Nazi one was like 40 pages long, and I felt like the story didn't really get started until close to the end. Uh, we get introduced to that uh, world's version of the uh, Freedom Fighters, uh, who uh, back in the original multiverse, uh, they existed on a world where World War II is still being fought, uh, and that's basically the premise here, except that uh, we're introduced uh, to this world's version of the Justice League, who are Nazis on that world. And we didn't have a Justice League in the original Earth-X, uh, which uh, the story behind that was that uh, way back in the 60s when they were doing the JLA-JSA team-ups, uh, whoever was writing the issue wanted to call it Earth Swastika. Uh, like, it would be Earth and then the Swastika logo. And then the editor said, no, uh, he fought in World War II and he said, I do not want to ever see a Swastika on the cover of a comic book. Uh, so he erased uh, the uh, outer lines on the Swastika and made it an X. And so that's how uh, Earth X came to be in the original DC Multiverse. Uh, but the Freedom Fighters are uh, Uncle Sam, uh, the Condor, uh, let's see, uh, Doll Man and Doll Woman and the Human Bomb, uh, the Ray, I think, is in there. Uh, and these are characters, I think, that could have supported their own issue, but they're there for, like, two pages. Uh, mostly we're focusing on Superman and his Crisis of Faith, and that could have been interesting, but then we don't really do anything with that either. Uh, we just kind of end abruptly, and I felt like the whole thing should have started uh, much sooner, or we should have started the story on, like, page 39 and then go from there and instead of building up to that. Uh, but I uh, really like the Thunderworld issue, really like the Secret Society of Superheroes, or maybe it was just Society of Superheroes. I think it was, because it was SOS. Uh, the Just was entertaining. Uh, it reminded me of Kingdom Come, how uh, the next generation of superheroes are all just a bunch of spoiled brats, except they act very differently here than they did in Kingdom Come. Uh, but I really like 
like Batman and Alexis Luthor's relationship. Uh, I like uh, how all these characters, even the adult uh, characters, like uh, the older ones, like Kyle Rayner and Connor Hawk, and uh, the uh, I guess uh, the previous generation who were younger uh, when uh, the characters like Superman and Batman were around, uh, even they kind of act immature and they don't really have anything to do. Uh, so they're reenacting old battles that they have. Uh, I really like that issue, although uh, there's not much of a story there. Uh, there is a story, uh, but it feels like you're just following these characters around as they all uh, kind of wander around aimlessly with nothing to do. Uh, but I did enjoy that issue quite a bit. Uh, there is a through line through all of these issues uh, where, uh, for example, characters in Thunderworld uh, might be reading uh, an issue uh, from Earth Prime. That's one I forgot, Earth Prime, uh, with uh, which is supposed to be like the real world with only one superhero. And uh, that one was also really weird. Uh, a lot of times Grant Morrison will try this uh, very metatextual thing where he's speaking directly to the audience. Uh, he did that a little bit in uh, Animal Man. Uh, he's done that before. Uh, the Invisibles was supposed to be uh, this big, long, uh, magical relationship between uh, the fictional text and the audience. Uh, he talked about how uh, Grant Morrison is a practicing magician, and he talked about how The Invisibles was one big, really long spell. Uh, I feel like this is something kind of like that, and it's all going way over my head. Sometimes uh, I, I, I'm going to be quoting something from that issue. Sometimes you just want a normal adventure story. Uh, that's something that uh, we're getting to see and hear uh, some of the readers who are uh, interacting with uh, the Multiversity comic, and some of them are complaining about how this is yet again Grant Morrison kind of uh, playing around with the metatextual uh, narrative, and they're saying, can't we just have a normal superhero adventure story? And reading the Earth Prime story, I was definitely thinking that. I was like, man, uh, I don't really get this. I don't see how this is related to any of the other characters uh, because we don't see this guy anywhere else in the book. Uh, he does uh, briefly interact with the Gentry, uh, but we don't see him interact with, say, uh, the Captain Marvel from Thunderworld or uh, the uh, the Wanderer. Uh, I don't know what his name was. Uh, there's one world uh, in the book in issues uh, that's actually there's two worlds uh, that are meant to be very similar to the Marvel Comics characters. And there's a guy, I don't remember what his superhero name is, so we will just call him Black Thor. Uh, he is an Australian version of Thor, basically. Uh, but we don't see him interacting with the Earth Prime guy. Uh, basically, uh, there's a lot of stuff here that I feel like... Uh, it feels like it's supposed to be like each issue stands on its own, and then when you read them together, it all makes a larger whole, kind of like Seven Soldiers did. But I don't think that this accomplishes that. Uh, for example, uh, Seven Soldiers introduces a character, I'm just going to call him Hannibal Lecter, Dr. Savannah, where he wears this weird mask thing, kind of like Hannibal Lecter did. Uh, and then he is like a recurring bad guy throughout the rest of this series. Uh, we see him again in at least two other issues, uh, the Multiversity Guidebook, and then uh, one of the others. I can't remember which one it was. Uh, but we see him show up again and again, and if you didn't read the Thunderworld issue, you might be a little bit confused who this guy is and where he's coming from. Yes, you would understand that he is a multiversal counterpart to uh, Dr. Savannah, but you wouldn't understand where he came from or what he's doing. Uh, in that way, I don't think that this works as uh, six or seven standalone issues that all uh, form a larger whole. Uh, now, that's not necessarily uh, a bad thing, uh, because I was not reading this as six or seven issues that forged, uh, formed a larger whole. I was reading it as one gigantic graphic novel. Uh, so in that regard, it worked fine for me, uh, but uh, reading this uh, and pretending like I was reading it as it was coming out, uh, I feel like Grant Morrison's desire uh, didn't fully come through with this book. Uh, I know it sounded like I was very harsh with this. I definitely recommend that you guys check it out. Uh, I really like the way that it ends, uh, but in so many ways, it feels like Seven Soldiers did this story, but better. Uh, I feel like uh, you look at Seven Soldiers, it does a lot of the same things uh, just in a slightly smaller scale uh, comic book. And yet it was a lot longer than Multiversity. Uh, this is, I mean, like seven or eight issues, but each one is double sized, but that's still not nearly as long as like 31 normal sized comic books. Uh, but I feel like uh, Seven Soldiers did what Multiversity tries to do, but just a little bit better. Uh, I said that uh, in my review of Seven Soldiers that the whole premise is seven superheroes who have never met each other working together uh, to defeat a common enemy. Uh, this, when you first get into it, it feels like it's going to be uh, six or seven alternate worlds where the characters have never met each other all working working to defeat a common enemy, and it kind of feels like it's retreading Seven Soldiers, but then uh, it doesn't feel like it's as uh, amazing as Seven Soldiers is. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I still think it's very good. I enjoyed a lot of this book, uh, but uh, trying to talk about it and uh, what it was intended with this book, I don't think that it quite matched up to what it was trying to do. Uh, but I still enjoyed it, and I still think that if you guys like uh, superhero stuff by Grant Morrison, you will definitely like this. Uh, the ending, uh, I liked it quite a bit, uh, but I'm curious if Grant Morrison is 
ever going to follow up on that because as I've talked about over the last couple of weeks, uh, nobody ever follows up on anything that Grant Morrison does. If he introduces a character or a team or a concept, nobody is going to follow up on that. Uh, so Grant Morrison introduces a new superhero team here uh, that I don't know if we're ever going to see again because uh, Grant Morrison has not been working uh, in mainstream comics for the last couple of years. He's been doing a lot of uh, indie stuff like that uh, Santa Claus Year One and uh, Happy and stuff like that. Uh, so I don't know if Grant Morrison has any intention of going back to uh, DC Comics and following up on Multiversity uh, because uh, there are a lot of loose threads here uh, that I could very easily see him following up on, uh, but who knows? It may be 10 years before he does that because uh, you see a lot of the threads over uh, quite a few of his works uh, that take a very long time for him to follow up on. Uh, I would really like to see that in something that's maybe just a little bit more straightforward than this, but uh, I did like this even though it sounds like I didn't. Uh, I really did like this though. Uh, so anyway, those are my thoughts on Multiversity. I hope that you guys liked this uh, review, and if you did, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I will be back tomorrow with a different video. In the meantime, you guys have a great rest of your day. Catch you later.